Hello there YouTube. This little video I'm making for Dirt Bike 5100. I made a video for me so I'm going to show them one of my old old little things I used to make here. This is going to be a dummy load. I'm going to use a black light bulb. Dummy load for your CV using a light bulb. Got the old radio squawk in the background here. Got a few clips I'll post of some of the skip conditions. Soup can. You can use a drill bit, drill a lot of little holes. I just took side cutters. Just make sure when you cut this out it's clean enough. You need one of these. Now this is supposed to have paper washer on it. If you notice when this screws together, there's no contact with this. You want you will be checking this with an ohm meter. You want no contact between this outside ground, the hot center, to this can. It's the same as using house printing, you want to be safety. This will be going up inside of here, like so. Like so, like that. I like this can. You see the ridge. If you stay inside that ridge ways, it fits right in there real nice. But you'll be checking this with an ohm meter or any, what, some kind of tester. Make sure there's no contact between this. You'll be using a couple of these. Your little terminals. I use a three foot jumper, PL259. I have a hole drilled in here. I use my step bit. I start out with a small pilot bit, use my step bit, portal drill, and you'll have a grommet in here. Now I use the can opener that's a safety type can opener. So this can be glued back on, and I like this idea because you can stick this on here and it's already stuck on there. I'll be weighing this down with some rocks or something. No one's going to know what's in there. I'll put some rocks in it. You don't want to fall over the light bulb in it. So you get the idea so far. Just whatever brand. Go up so far with it, with the grommet. It's going to be a little tricky. Of course, this will go in here first. But I want to show a quick way of how I strip my coax. I'll go around here and twirl up my hand, cut real carefully, don't cut into the braid. Real sharp exacto knife blade or utility knife blade, I got a mini one. And then you'll cut a slit in here. Get a little tighter on the end there. So that comes right off. Now, there is a way you can bunch this down and feed this through here. I take a tool and then braid it. I don't feel like bending the center. I take a tool and then braid it like this. See how easy that is? We'll stop the camera and then we'll show you what it's done. See how easy that is to unbraid it? Just try not to break any. I don't like that idea where you can bend it down, make a hole, and pull it through because you're bending it just up stiff. This is the Mini 8U. So we'll come back when we have the two rig terminals on. You see how you can just pick at that and unbraid it? That's why I like to do it. Okay, so we'll stop and then we'll come back. We have the two terminals on. Okay, we got our terminals on. Be careful you bend these. These break easy. But you're going to have to bend it up to get it down in there. Be careful when you bend it. This one's a little more flexible. I didn't have to bend it as far. Get the idea. Then you can pull enough here. I've got enough out of here. Then you stick it down in the can. Get it with my finger. These do come with carbon arcs. I could have bought some of these. I wish I could have bought a hundred of them. When they restore them old signs that have neon, they had light bulbs. This is what you find. These are ceramic. They were like 600 volt, whatever. Ceramic sockets. Uh, company. It could have been all electronics in California. I wish I had a bunch of these. These are nice ceramics. Do not use ones with a light switch in it. You could use one of those ceiling fixtures porcelain if it does not have the chain pull. You have just terminals, that's it. You don't want to go to the chain switch. You have to have this type of socket. You can use that big one. Uh, you can find it in most home supply places. You can use the big one that doesn't have the pull chain. Make sure you remember that. Okay, we'll fit our coax back down in here. 
ham operators jump on you when you don't say coaxial cable. You can leave a little loop in there. You want it to lay nice though. Cause it'll kind of get a, it'll kind of naturally form. You can warm it up. You want it to be comfortable in there. Whatever, whatever it takes to make it comfortable. You don't want it to be in a bind where it doesn't set down on the thing right. To get the idea. This is pretty easy. I did zoom in here. Check this little meter. Make sure that this ain't touching, because this ceramic goes through the hole, preventing this ground from touching. Just like when you go through a box, a sign, these are made for those old signs that wasn't neon. They had all the bulbs in them. You watch car shows like I do, like Pickers or anything, when they find them old signs, that's why it'd be nice if I had some of these. They had these for probably under a buck a piece one time, and I never did buy it. I probably have only about six or seven of them left. They came out of a school scoreboard sign. There you get the idea. You put some rocks in here, and then we'll have a video of it loaded up with the SWR meter. But we'll get some close-ups here. Be careful you bend them terminals and make sure they're tight because you're never going to be back in here again. Make sure they're tight. You don't need to put any sealer. Nothing's going to touch. As I said, nothing's touching outside of the can. And you'll put your bulb in there. I'm going to use a black light bulb because if you use a regular bulb, I have one more little bulb I'll show and make a video that goes in, the, in a 259 connector. It just blinds you when, it, when you key up. You get distracted what you're doing because you got a bright light in your face. This is going to glow enough to see it. It's kind of a novelty item, but this is a 75 ohm bulb. I've had good luck with those, maybe 100 watt. If you have trouble with your SWRs not being 1.5 or less, try different bulbs. That is the whole trick to this gadget. Try different wattage bulbs and you'll get a lower SWR. All your RF frequency is contained in here is why it it goes through there. It acts as a dummy load. I have talked several miles on these. Me and my friend, I lived in the country once, and he's the one that taught me. I talked several miles in the town on a light bulb. Had it up on the wall. Had it hanging on top of my cabinet. So, and then the other people didn't know who was out there. They could barely hear us, but we just could hear each other talking on a light bulb. But I have a video of it in use here. Shortly, I'll add to this, I'll shut back down again, and then we'll, next time you see me, I'll be transmitting on. Okay, went back to review, sorry about the off-camera shots. I want to give everybody a better look down in here. Get your coax comfortable. You need to have to warm it up with a hairdryer or something, get it comfortable. That way when it sets. And I'll be gluing this on. You can use glue. I'll be gluing the lid back on. But this works best. Pine cam's got them ridges in it that matches your socket. And if you use that ceiling one, like I said, without the chain pull, you can buy one of them plastic boxes. Then you can mount it up, like I can mount it right up here, and the ball would stick out. Get it up where you don't hit hit nothing with it. I like the can idea. I just kind of like the novelty of its can of soups. Off brand, but oh well. It makes it all the more oddball. But I thought I'd add that. Another little close up. 75 watt black light bulb because I don't like the bright bulb in my face. If I'm using this to work on a radio, I do not want the bulb in my face. Even the little one, like I said before, it goes in the connector. I'll make a video about it someday and make one. It gets to you. You get this bright flashes like somebody flashed the camera face. You start losing you know, your vision when you're trying to work on something. This will be more pleasant to the eye and you'll be able to see it glow. You can amaze your friends and neighbors when you're done. Just warning, put this on a cheap CB and have a good SWR meter and have fun with it. Don't put it on your high dollar radio. I'll put it on a high dollar radio if the SWRs are good if I'm working on it because there's no danger involved. But okay, get back to work, get this done so we can show it in action. Okay, the black light bulb didn't work because you couldn't see it. A little too high SWR. This is a little 40 watt appliance bulb. We're going to do this on AM first. Hello. Might as well play it back on my radio. Forward modulation. If you're just playing in a radio, which you're not supposed to do, back 
left this off. If you're playing the radio you wasn't supposed to, you'd want to go more power as you cost. Now, this radio's been butchered. Hell, I had to fix it to do this. They had it on, on high power. When they had this on high power, it would key up and the bulb would flicker. Because they cranked the wattage up so much because it's got a high and low button in the radio, this Mars 88, that they got in there and butchered it and put a diode and everything. I'm going to rant about that. They just needed a piece of crap on high. So, I'll show you. This is high power. Do it again. Hello. Hello. Let's go back to low power. See what everybody else thinks. Hello. Are you? Are you? Hello. We're showing about a two and a half SWR. Are you? Trick is experiment with the ball. This is high power. Are you? Are you? See how the bulb just doesn't do what you like? Now we're going to go to the sideband, which this thing pumps out about 25 watts. Hello! Whoa! Might to get some echo. Oh! 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 We'll put a Roger beep on it. Hello! Hello! Gotta hurt some ears. Hello. Audio. We'll zoom in here a little bit. Hello. 